Alright, what's up everybody? We're back for part 11 in our series of how to go from zero to hero in Cadence development. And in this video we're going to be talking about account storage. So um, this is probably the second biggest topic on flow, first one being resources. This is probably the second most important, so if you're, if you're going to pay attention to any one of my stupid videos, this is it. Um, because this is this is really important and it's going to come up uh, a billion times on flow and cadence development. So um, let's get started here. So um, I want to kind of step back and talk about what even an account is on flow. Um, and so let's do that now. So I've, I've drawn up a diagram um, of an account. So this is in the red box. So everything you're seeing in here lives inside of an account. Um, and so the first thing I want to talk about is like contract code. So your account actually has stored in it um, contract code. So when we go to the playground and like, you know, we're looking at like this contract code right here, this is actually stored inside of an account, um, which is 0x01 in this case. Now, the playground is a little confusing because on the playground, you can only have one contract per account. But in the actual flow network on mainnet and testnet, and even emulator, just not in the playground, you can have multiple contracts in your account. Um, and so, for example, if you had a contract called Hello World and another contract called Hello World 2, both of these, the code lives inside of an account uh, in its storage. Um, so that's one point. The second thing I wanna, uh, wanted to talk about, which we're going to be, this is what we're going to be talking about in this video, is account storage. Um, and this is the, the blue box right here. Um, and so I, I, this is kind of confusing because contract code technically lives in an account, but whatever, I labeled this account storage. So this is what we're going to be talking about um, in this video. Um, and so th there's three main concepts with account storage. One is the storage path, and I'll talk about what paths are in a second. One is a, is private path, and one is public path. Um, and so if, if we look at this diagram right now, you'll see that uh, there's a path, um, and everything in storage, actually it'll, it'll be helpful to go to this diagram. So you'll see that you know there's storage, there's private, and there's public. Let's actually go to, to this page, which I'm specifying exactly what each one of these is. So storage is where you actually store stuff. So if you have a resource and you want to store that inside of account storage, this is where you do it, inside of storage. Um, storage can only be accessed by the account owner uh, using a type called auth account, and we'll see uh, where that gets brought up. Um, a spoiler, it's in a transaction. Um, and the third thing is it can only ever be accessed in the prepare phase of a transaction. So if we were to go to a transaction really quick, you know, we haven't really talked about what, th what these things are yet, but you'll notice that this prepare phase has access to the signer of the transaction, the signer's auth account. Um, and so this is where you can access account storage. It's inside the auth account um, that you get in the prepare phase. You don't have access to this in the execute phase. So account storage is only ever accessible in the prepare phase of a transaction unless you were to pass the auth account into like the contract, but that should never be done. Uh, in cadence development, it is never okay to pass the auth account into the contract code. So always make sure that you're only ever accessing the auth account inside the transaction. It's just bad practice to use it elsewhere. Okay, so the public link, um, if we go back to this drawing, you'll see that account storage points to different uh, areas. Um, so you get private and public paths from storage. So actually, it might be more helpful if, if, I, um, if I were to draw these arrows like facing the other way, um, because it's, it's more like these two point this way. Um, public and private actually look at storage. Um, and so you're not actually really storing anything there. They're kind of just pointers to storage, but in different ways. And so public um, you know, looks at storage. It can be accessed by anyone. So think of public as sort of like your public API. Anyone can look at it. And it can be accessed anywhere. So it can be accessed in transactions, in scripts, in contracts, literally anywhere. It's, it's a public thing that anyone can read. And all you need for public is the account address. So all, that's all you need. Um, now private is, is sort of like a private API. So only, P, so okay, so this also looks at storage. So it's a pointer to things in storage. But it can only be accessed by the account owner or whoever the owner gives access to. So if I give access to my friends, they can see it, but not the public. So it's a little different. Um, and in this video, we're gonna show examples of storage in public. We're not gonna really show examples of private, 
um, that will, 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 will show how to make something private, but I'm not going to actually show how to use it because that's a little complicated, and we'll see it in future videos. You rarely use private, but you'll use it sometimes, and we'll talk about that in later videos. So let's actually sort of get into how this how this really works, right? Oh, and I've also forgot to mention that um, so how you get to storage is through paths. So um, account storage is accessed through slash storage slash the name of what you named it. Um, and let's say in storage we're storing a hello world at NFT. Just stick with me here. You know, we'll see this in code. In private, it's accessed with the private path and then whatever you named it. And in public is the public path and whatever you named it. Um, and in the last video, we talked about resource interfaces. That's really um, important here in the sense that publicly, you know, if we have storage, if we have like a hello world NFT, what we can do publicly is restrict access to hello world NFT restricted to a public interface. And so let's let's just jump into code. I've been talking too much. So we're in the code now. Um, and what I've done is I've defined a resource uh, named greeting. And I've defined a resource interface named iGreeting. And so I'm using the example from previous videos, from, from actually the last video. So if, if you uh, want to go there, maybe you can uh, see this. But you should now understand what resource interfaces and resources do. If you don't understand this, go back to the previous video. It will make a lot more sense. So I've defined a greeting that has a greeting uh, variable and an other stuff variable. I've initialized them here. And the resource interface called iGreeting only exposes the greeting uh, variable, right? So let's actually deploy this. Um, and the other thing I've done is I've defined a function to actually uh, return a greeting a resource. That's unrestricted, right? Okay. So how can we take a greeting resource and store it inside of our account storage? Let's do that now. So what you can do is something called save. So account um, dot save, and let's open up our parentheses. So you can only, remember, we're saving something to account storage. You can only do that with an auth account. So that's why we're doing it in the prepare phase, right? So account.save, and the syntax for this is we're going to save, and this is where you actually put the thing you're storing. And so it's going to be a resource. So we're moving a resource into account storage, and this is going to be hello world dot create greeting, right? Um, and then you have to specify where we're storing this. So to slash storage, because remember, we're, you can only store things to account storage, slash um, my greeting, okay? And what we can do now is we can run, so this is where it matters now what account we're signing with. We want to store this to, I like, I like the pink hair um, of this woman, so we're going to uh, send this to the blockchain, and we're going to store it inside uh, account two's storage. So send this, and let's also just log um, stored greeting resource. Okay, let's clear this, and let's log it, and boom, stored greeting resource. So what we've done is we've stored a greeting resource to account two's storage. Now, let's see what happens, by the way, if we try to do this again. Um, let's send this. We get an error fail to save object it already stores an object so please note that when you're storing things to storage you can't overwrite things and the reason for that is because again what if we had a billion dollar nft at that storage and we accidentally overwrote it it'd be terrible right so only one thing can exist at a storage path at a time um so you can't just overwrite it if we wanted to store another one we would have to change our name to like my let's just call it like my second greeting um, and if we ran this, then it would work, right? It would store it again. Um, but we're going to focus on this storage path for now. Okay. Um, and so what we can actually do, let's run a separate transaction called like uh, get uh, my greeting. What we're going to do is we're going to actually look in storage and get our greeting back from storage. So let's do that here. So um, we uh, looked at um, greeting resource. So in this one, we're going to, instead of saving it to storage, so you can think if we took our greeting and we put it in our storage, now we're going to go in storage and take it out. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. So let's say, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, let um, uh, my greeting uh, equal. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say account.borrow. Um, and how what uh, I don't like that. So what we're gonna do with borrow is you specify the type. So 
what happens uh, it, it, with, with, with dot borrow is, you know, we stored in this one a resource to account storage, right? The whole resource. What dot borrow does is it borrows a reference. So we're not actually moving the resource out of storage, okay? We're just borrowing a reference to it. So the resource is staying in storage. We're just looking at a reference. So account dot borrow a reference to hello world dot greeting. And it's going to be from slash storage slash my greeting. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to now run this and we're going to uh, log my greeting, my greeting dot greeting. Okay? Now it's going to complain. It says value of type hello, the reference hello world dot greeting question mark has no member. So if you remember from the video of optionals, the way we solve this is to actually um, force unwrap the optional. And you do that with um, this force unwrap operator right here. So this is saying if, if we can't get the reference, just panic and abort the transaction. But if we can, meaning there's something exists here, then we're going to actually just get the reference. Um, and so what we can do is we can clear this. Um, and we can, we're logging the greeting. So let's run from account two, right? And look what it did. It logged the greeting and then said, looked at greeting resource. Great. Now let's see what happens if we try to run this with account one. Because remember, account one doesn't have a resource in its storage. Look, so if we, if we clear this and send it, unexpectedly found nil while forcing optional value. And that's because it, it, it failed to force unwrap right here. Now, what you can do, and I advise you do this, is instead of, so you can get rid of this exclamation mark. And what you can do instead is do question mark, question mark, panic, and say, we could not borrow the uh, greeting resource. And what this does instead is it makes your error messages more uh, clear. So instead of just saying, oh, we unexpectedly found nil, it will instead actually panic and give you this error. So let's actually send. And look, it says panic. We could not borrow the greeting resource, right? But if it works, you know, meaning for account two, it, if we send it, it'll, it'll just still work, right? So I would always suggest adding a panic instead of just being lazy and throwing in an exclamation mark. But you can do that if you want. Okay. So we actually borrowed a reference to our greeting. Now, what if we wanted to actually take the resource out of storage? Well, we can do that, um, just called like a take out. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this code. Now, I might, I might actually get the syntax wrong. Um, and the reason for that, so let's, let's say like we, um, let's say we took out greeting resource. So I might get the syntax wrong for this. And the reason is because of the fact that I literally never use load. In cadence development, load is is something that that's 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 weird. And what load does is it actually will take the resource out of storage. So what you can do is is instead of borrowing a reference and, and leaving the thing in storage, this actually takes it out. Um, and so if we say we're taking out a hello world greeting, I think this is right. Um, and then we're going to say slash storage slash uh, mm, slash my greeting. Um, and then we we did this. Oh, and remember, because we're actually taking out the resource, we have to like move it in now. So we're we're gonna take it out. We're gonna log my greeting uh, dot greeting, and then we're going to destroy um, my greeting. Um, oh, look! I, I guess I, I guess I got it right. So loading actually takes the resource out instead of just borrowing a reference to it. So let's actually do that now. So let's clear this. Let's send it. Look, so it, it logged hello world, it took out the greeting resource, and then you'll notice that if we go back to our transaction, it's not going to say like, oh, something already exists there, right? It's going to store it because we, we just took it out and destroyed it so we can store something else there, right? Okay, so this is account storage. Now, note that all of this has to be done inside the prepare phase because we're accessing an auth account. If we tried to do this inside of, of the execute, look, um, cannot find variable in the scope account because we don't have access to the auth account here. So you can't do that. So save, borrow, and load can only ever be done inside of the uh, prepare phase. Um, now borrow, borrow is a little different because you can borrow something called the capability. Um, and that's what we're going to get into in this next part of the video. So um, let's take a quick breather. We've done uh, account storage. 
Now we're going to look at uh, public. So how do we actually make our things publicly available to anybody? Um, and so, so let's do that. So what we're going to do is modify what we've already done, right? So I'm going to redeploy this contract um, just so that all of, the, you know, when, when we redeploy the, the contract, um, all of the like, um, actually here. So, okay, so, so we'll do this again, right? Um, wait, let's, let's redeploy the contract. Um, and what happens when we redeploy the contract is all the account storages get like reset. So um, we're just basically starting from square one. So this is um, save, right? Now what we're gonna, sh what I'm gonna show you next is something called link. Um, and what link does is it actually makes uh, it so that we can take whatever's in our storage and we're gonna make it publicly available. So we're gonna say account.link, right? Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just specify that th this is the type of the thing that we're linking. So we're gonna say we're linking a reference to hello world dot greeting um, and what we're going to do that's a little different is we're going to restrict this to hello world dot i greeting right so what we're saying oh and then you know then we have to specify uh, where we're actually going to be storing this stuff right so or where we're going to be linking this to so what you do in the first uh, part of this um, thing here is you say uh, the public path so slash public slash my greeting public and the target is where it's pointing to so we're going to say this is pointing um to slash storage slash my greeting so this is where it's actually um looking right so what this is basically saying is we have some right here we save something to storage and then we're going to say we're publicly going to allow someone to look at that thing in storage by getting a reference to that greeting thing but restricted to i greeting right so the thing so the thing that lives here is a at greeting okay but but we expose a reference to hello world or, or, or i'll just shorten it to greeting that's restricted to i greeting so this is saying that the public can actually look at the thing in storage, but only the greeting. They can't look at other stuff because other stuff doesn't exist inside of iGreeting, right? So let's do that now, okay? So let's um, let's send this, um, and it's stored the resource, and I should probably add like, and linked uh, part of it to public, okay? So let's then go to uh, get my greeting. So I'm trying to think of how I wanna do this. So. Um, inside of here, you know, we already looked at how to like borrow and all that stuff. So let's look at how to get a public capability. And remember, um, I said in, in here that, you know, it looks at storage and it can be accessed by anyone and anywhere. So to prove that point, let's actually go to the script um, and let's do that here. Um, just to prove to you that we can literally view the public from anywhere. Um, and I'll show you how to do that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say let uh, public my greeting equal um, and this is sort of, so stick with me here so there's a lot of syntax that comes up here but let's let's walk through this together so we're going to um, first um, actually let me explain what what capabilities are so what we just did is you know we made something publicly accessible um, and if we were to go back to this drawing look what I put here I put capabilities so the way that you make something available to the public or to private is through capabilities. Um, the reason this public can look here is because it's using something called the capability. So even though we don't see the capability here, that's what it's doing behind the scenes. Um, and so in order to actually get this public link, we'll have to do that through a capability. So let's do that now. Um, and also capabilities can only ever be used on something called a public account. So um, what I showed you in here, this is an auth account, right? So um, an auth account is like restrictive only to the owner, right? And that's whoever is signing the transaction. A public account is different. So it's actually a type, right? So we th there's a type called like, you know, auth account. Um, there's also a type called a public account. Um, and the way to get a public account, so I'm just going to delete this. Uh, the way to get a public account is through something called a the get account method and the get account takes in a address and so this function returns a public account 
So what we have to do is because capabilities are only accessible on public accounts, we have to say get account, and we're going to pass in uh, account, right? And so account um, is the address that we're passing in here, okay? So this is now a public account, and so now we can actually get the capability. So get capability, um, and the path is slash public slash, let's see what we named it. Um, we named it slash my greeting public. So slash my, oh, oops, slash my greeting public, right? And then once we have this capability, we can borrow the capability. So dot borrow, okay? And the type, right? Let's see what we linked. We linked a hello world dot greeting, right? So this, I'm gonna copy this. This is the link. This is the type we exposed publicly. So that's what we're borrowing here, okay? Then all you do is you throw in parentheses and we'll add a panic here that says uh, we couldn't get the public link, okay? Bam. So now what we're going to do, um, oh, we have to import hello world obviously. So import hello world from the first account. Um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to say um, we're going to log public my greeting dot greeting. Bam. And so we're going to pass in, um, remember, right? Let's let's see, does this exist at account uh, 02? Yep, it exists at account 02 because it's saying it already exists there. So we can run this with account 0x02. Now if we execute this, bam, it logs our greeting. But look, this was the whole point is that, you know, if we go back, you know, other stuff isn't exposed by iGreeting, right? So if we were to try and log, look, public my greeting dot other stuff, it doesn't work. It says member of restricts type is not accessible. So this kind of shows you how you can store something in storage, right? Um, but then only make certain parts of it accessible to the public. So that's what we're doing here. Um, and so, you know, just to kind of prove our point here, you know, inside this transaction where we're actually using the auth account, so the owner has access to this, you know, the owner can easily, if they want to, just say dot other stuff, right? And boom, you know, if we were to run this, you know, it would log other stuff, which is, you know, it works. Um, and that's because this reference isn't restricted. Um, it's only restricted because we did that uh, publicly, right? Um, but again, you know, if we wanted to, you know, let's, let's just reset all the state really quick. So let's reset all the state. Um, and we wanted to just not have it restricted, right? For some reason, so we're so we're just exposing greeting as a whole, um, and we just didn't want to pop, you know, restrict it. We could send this, um, and then inside of our script, um, we could, you know, actually say that publicly, you know, it, it's not restricted anymore. Pass in zero x zero two, clear this, and it's not complaining about other stuff anymore, you know, because now it's it, we didn't restrict it publicly. Um, so that's that. Now, the, the one last thing I want to go over is how would you do this to a, for a private capability? And a private capability, um, all you would do is just say private. So if you wanted to store this privately, um, you would do this. And then, you know, the, the, the trick is that I'm not going to do this in this video, but the trick is that you would then get that private, cap the, the owner of, the, of, of this uh, resource that's in their storage, they could get the capability and give it to other people. Um, and so the way they would do that is, um, you know, inside this transaction, for example, um, what they could do is just say like let private capability equals account, um, uh, or sorry, remember, because capabilities are only on public accounts, you would actually have to say get account, um, the signer right here, account, and then get their address. So that's the syntax for it. And then you would say dot get capability. Let's move this up. Um, the private path is slash private slash my greeting um, private, right? And so let's let's just change this to private. Um, uh, mis expected got private. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. So yeah, private capabilities are not accessible publicly, right? It's only it's only private. Um, you can't you can't do that on a public path. So you would have to say you know account. Um, dot get capability um, and get this private um, this private capability here and then what you could do is then give that to other people so let's say there was a resource inside your contract that allowed you to store a private capability 
you could then pass this private capability to you know a resource and then give that resource to people and then they could you know borrow from it and do whatever um and so that's what you would do here so yeah so the private capability is only accessible on an off, off account obviously because it's it's private to the owner and whoever has it um but you know uh you know publicly you know you can you can only if you if, if you have a, a, a public capability you can only do that um on you know the the uh the public uh account so this was a sort of long video i really apologize for that um but you know this is a super important concept um and so i hope this helps um and yeah so in the next video we're actually going to go over a a walkthrough of tying all of this together we've done so far so this kind of concludes our, you know, cadence journey, the first part of it. Um, we're going to tie everything together in the next video. Um, and yeah, I hope this was helpful. So thank you so much for listening and see you in the next one.